So, Ray, as you know, in our leadership and team development training of the companies, a huge issue I've come across with when we're talking to the CEOs, to the managers, to the leaders, is they have their companies operating in separate silos. That's been the biggest, that literally the number one issue, the problem they're having is their team is separating in silos. So I'm assuming that you can relate to that in the Navy SEALs. How, how would that work out in the Navy SEALs? It wouldn't. That's compartmentalization, and it's not effective. It has to be one team, one fight. As we talked about earlier, you know, you have to have that mission. Everybody has to be, have one united front. There has to be one objective, one goal, one mission. And that's where we come in, where we, we break down these walls, these barriers of he sits over here, he sits over here, he does this, he does this. The machine is not going to turn. It's not going to operate unless everybody, right, everybody is functioning and all the cylinders are firing. And how do you do that? You bring everybody together. You build up, you break them down, and you build them up so they're all on the same sheet of music. That's how we do it in the SEAL teams. That's how you do it in the military. That's how, whenever we go into a fight, we're outgunned, overmanned. But guess what? We still come back because we know what we're capable of doing because we're always together and we know each other, you know, from the inside out, upside, top side down. We know everything about each other. We know how. Uh, that individual is going to react before they even do it. And my, my point here is, is what's the difference between that and being in the business field? Imagine if you and I could go into a, um, a boardroom and we're getting ready to close a deal and you and I don't even have to, literally, we can just look at each other and know what the other person is thinking to close that deal. Imagine, imagine the tactical, technical, and business advantage that's going to give you over whoever your competitors are. But how could, you, how could you possibly get to that level with, within your team and within other teams? You have, you, know, you, have, you have your group that you're with. You have another team over here. Another, how could you possibly get to that nonverbal level of nonverbal communication? How is that even possible? Well, you know, that's one of the things that we teach here is we teach different types of communication, verbal, nonverbal. Uh, but what we do is, is like I told you before, we, we might have a company with 30 people, right? Accounting, marketing, this, this. They all, stay, they all have their, like we call it, their own little cities, what we do is we break those, those barriers down. There's no, more, there's no more territorial lines. Let's get together. Let's work. Let's interact people. Let's mix the groups up when they train together, right? Um, you can't always pick. I, I love it all the time. Pick your partner. We don't do that here. We pick your partner. We want to pick people who have strengths and weaknesses so they can feed off each other. That's how you're going to grow. So Navy SEALs, you're, one of, you're the one percenters, the top tier, most well-trained operators, somewhere up there probably near the Marines, maybe, maybe up to the Marine level, possibly, I'm not sure. You gotta be at least close. Okay. But with, with being such a high level operator, literally the one, not even the one percenters, I mean, it's even less than that, right? The mm -hmm. top, top well-trained warriors in the world. How, can, how do they get over the fact of, you know, we're the best in the world. My team, my specific team of, you know, that you're in doesn't need the help of these other teams. How do you get beyond that? How do you break down those barriers? Well, I think a lot of it is uh, you have to learn how to control the discipline of the egos and the attitudes of what we do and realize that, you know, we are a team. Like, we always want help from other people. It's, like I said, one team, one fight. I can't, you know, we have Marines coming in to assist us or help us instead of being like, we don't need them. They're, and I, no, they're just, no. Take all the help you can take. Learn when you can learn. Take it because everybody has a specialized skill set and they, everybody brings something to the table. And everyone relies on each other. And the minute that you get so arrogant or confident or, or just, just ass nine, sorry, pardon my language, that you don't need any help, that is when you are going to take yourself and your company and flush them down the toilet. Because I'm telling you, that's the first thing we always say in our seminars. Attitudes and egos, leave them at the front door. We're here to learn. Roll up your sleeves. We're gonna get dirty. Ego is the big, the big one I was getting at because yeah. everyone's got an ego, right? Everybody, of course, everybody. everyone's got an ego. But when you, if you don't put that aside in combat, it's gonna to lead to a lot of dead people. In the business world, that's gonna to lead, lead to a lot of lost revenue, a lot of lost time, lost productivity, just by thinking, all right, there's a sales department, the marketing department, the administrative department, whatever else there is, research and development. Now, they need to all be thinking mission accomplishment. As yes. you mentioned, I love the saying, one team, one fight. Exactly. So one team or one silo, one of those silos doesn't need to get credit. When, when the mission is done, does one single person or one single team need to get the credit for accomplishing the whole mission of the battle? No. No. Absolutely not. No. It's going to be our team one. Our the collective, our team, collective so efforts. One team. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's, not, it's not worried about who's getting the credit for it. They're not worried about that. I know in the Marine Corps it wasn't. It's like, let's just get the job done 
And guess what? We're going to be victorious. Yeah. We. Yeah. We will be victorious. That's Not, right. oh, I did this, I did that. We're putting the egos aside. I think a huge part of breaking down these silos mm -hmm. in, obviously, in the military, that's what's done it, is putting those egos aside, is that that's what we can bring into the business front, is breaking down, breaking down those egos to break through those silos, connect mm -hmm. those silos together. Because when it comes down to it, you have to make some split second decisions on the battlefield as you do in the business field. So do, you need to understand that what your decisions, the effect that your personal decisions are having on the collective. Exactly. So can you, you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, let's use the battlefield, for example, you know, when you shoot, move and communicate is something we talk about in the SEAL teams, right? You know, you need to shoot, move and communicate to effectively get from point A to point B to get off the X, if you will, um, to get to safe haven, to do whatever it is you have to do. Same thing applies in, in the business field, right? I mean, here's the, here's the deal. And people always understand, if you make a mistake in the battlefield, lives can be lost. But you know what? When you make a mistake in the business field, like detrimental mistake, Lives are at stake. And livelihoods. And are, livelihoods. Are and, you growing. know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a sole pro, uh, provider for my family. Um, and I spoke to you, uh, we spoke when we, when we started this up, you know, you were mentoring me. I was like, I am scared to death of business field because I don't know who the enemy is because everybody puts a smile on their face. Overseas, it's easy. You know, you know who the enemy is most of the time. But here, you know, someone shakes your hand, they tell you it's a great job. And next thing you know, they're trying to stab you in the back. So my point is, is let's, get our team, right? Because we don't need internal conflict. That's what, you know, like in the SEAL teams, we are brothers, right? So my thing is, is let's make your team brothers and sisters. You know, let's help each other. Let's give you that mindset, that, that uh, fortitude, the discipline, the, the, just the motivation and the drive to succeed. So that here's what I know is if I work for 30 people and we're all on the same sheet of music, I know that those other 29 people are not my enemy. Okay, what are we going after? Whatever we're going after is the enemy, you know, right? We're, and we want to attack it, we want to destroy it, we want to conquer it. And that's how you're gonna be more effective. But if you have a few individuals that are only thinking of themselves, they're the ones that wanna have all the credit, they wanna take all the fame, they are going to be the link or the weak link in, in your armor that's gonna get you killed, right? You know what happens if you have weak armor, if it's deteriorating, it's gonna end up, you're gonna get penetrated versus having solid armor that's that's well fortified. So you have to think of yourself as a piece of armor and you have to be well fortified. So you have to surround yourself. And as a leader, you have to figure out who you want on that team. Because like you've told me before is sometimes you have people that are in, in a position that they don't need to be in. Or you've got an individual that is just so negative um, that they're bringing the team down. We've talked about this before. For every negative person, you need seven positive people. Well, if you only have a business of nine people, that's not good. Going down too. So my thing is, is you need to learn how to, we talk about it, trim the fat. You need to either figure out how to retrain those people up or get them off that team and bring somebody in that wants to be there, who's hungrier and has a better attitude. So what I'm hearing you say about, about the Navy SEALs, and I know it's true for mm -hmm. the Marine Corps and in general, just the military, mm -hmm. is you go and train to kill. You have the highest, highest you know, high tech equipment that mm -hmm. you're using the high-tech weaponry, mm -hmm. which is all pretty much useless without the interpersonal skills, the relationship management between you and your team. Starts here. Between your team and the other here. team. Yeah. It doesn't matter what equipment you have. Exactly. It's useless. You almost don't even need equipment when you have that. Yep. You Because know, you, you together collectively will figure out, yep. adapt and overcome whatever you need to do. And that's the same way that I think it goes in the business world. Yep. Is It's all about relationship building, then managing those relationships, mm -hmm. cultivating the relationships, then yep. nurturing those relationships so you know that this team, not just in my one silo, but all these other small teams in the collective group and company or military or SEALs have my back, will kill for me, will die for me. Yes. And you know, translate that over into the business world, will do whatever it takes yeah. to help accomplish a mission and help you succeed. Even if I have to go do something, go out of my way on my off time to help you succeed in your department, yes. and then your department gets the credit for it, I don't care because I know the collective, the one team, the one fight. So it really comes down to relationship yeah. building, relationship management, and interpersonal skills is what's gonna break down the walls of those silos. I agree, you know, we talk about the first letter of team is trust. You have to trust in yourself, trust, trust in your brothers or your teammates. And like I said, of the four F-bombs, the bottom, the, the foundation is faith. You have to believe in yourself and believe in others. So I don't know if you can see that overlapping field of fire right there, right? But 
That is key. You have to have trust. Without trust, it's not going to happen. And this is what I'm going to tell people. If you want to be successful, if you want to be the tier one operator, you want to be the Navy SEAL, if whatever it is you do, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to make you, per se, a Navy SEAL, but I'm going to make you the Navy SEAL of business, right, of your family, or whatever it is you're trying to attack, is this is what I'm going to tell you. It's not a nine to five job. It's not a nine to five job. Um, we talk about this, right? When we do our, some of our drills, don't, I don't want you to meet the expectation. I want you to exceed it. I want you to make the new standard. You are the expectations. You are the, the alpha that is going to step up and create greatness. So how do you do that? Well, guess what? When your day's over with, first thing you should do at work, does anybody need any help with anything? What do you, most people do in business when they're done? They're out. They're they gone They punch early. their clock punch and they're gone. Early. Actually, most people, we, we know statistically we're not going to get into that right now, they've already punched their clock out by about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. They're already thinking of what's mm -hmm. next. But a true operator, a true SEAL, a true military personnel, a true Tier 1 operator is always worried about the other individuals, the teammates. Hey, are we good? Okay. We don't leave until everyone's done. We leave no man behind. I'm going to do the same thing at work. I'm, I'm not. Hey, you need some help, Steve? Let's get it done. You know, you're having a problem with this, you need something moved, you're having issues at the house, hey, we'll come over, we'll, we'll collectively work together. Because once you do that, you're establishing and creating bonds that are, gonna, that are gonna help, like I said, battlefield, business field, home field, why not? SEALs, the reason why we're so successful is we're, we don't just go to work and we're done. You know, our families, we're like a family, we're just a giant family. So why not instill and institute those same teachings to what people are doing in the business field. And you mentioned sta the standards and expectations. Expectation mm -hmm. is, a, is a key one. In the military, the Marine Corps, and overall in the battle at mm -hmm. war, we have the commander's intent, right? Yep. So we know exactly what needs to get done, what our role is in accomplishing that mission of the commander's intent for that specific mission or battle. So we know I need to do this in my job. The reason why I'm doing this mm -hmm. is because it's going to support the commander's intent in this way. So it relates perfect into the business world mm -hmm. and where the issues are with those people clocking out early. Where the way I see it, it starts from a, a leadership position with the leaders not effectively bringing down the message. Mm -hmm. What is their mission, vision, mm -hmm. values, and goals? What is their, if you want to call it, commander's intent of the company? Yeah. And how does every single individual role contribute to the collective of that mission and vision and commander's intent? So I think that's what the military does clear, and that's what we bring to these companies is mm -hmm. having them clearly get that information out there to their team about what is the commander's intent, what is the reason mm -hmm. why every, and every single person needs to know why they're doing every single individual t task or mission, that, that how it contributes mm -hmm. to that goal. So imagine this, I'm gonna tell you guys, I'm gonna tell everybody, the success of SEALs and why we're so successful. So if we have a platoon of 10 guys, let's just say we have a platoon of 10 guys, each individual, each team member knows every other person's responsibility, roles, and jobs. If somebody gets, gets taken down and, and at combat, guess what? Another person's gonna come up, take up that role, and continue. Imagine if we could teach your company how to collectively know each other's roles and responsibilities of that company. Most individuals go in, I'm accounting. What do I do? Accounting. I know accounting. But imagine if I knew a little bit of your job. Imagine if you set up once a week an hour out of your workday to start doing almost, I, I call it like a formal, it's, a, it's some, something what we do, where we start learning other people's roles and responsibilities. Imagine how much more respect and, um, and produ productivity you could get from that. The thing is, is the more you know about your company, okay, the more that you share with your company, the more the company's gonna know about you, the more productive you're gonna be. That's the secret. It's all about knowing the overlying Yes, and so versus can... just coming in with blinders on, typing on the keyboard, okay, I'm gonna collect my pay, thank you. Whenever you see the boss, you sit up and look smart, and then as soon as you're done, what are you doing? You're grabbing your phone and you're looking at your phone. No, imagine if everybody had passion, they had purpose, they wanted to be the tier one operator. They wanted to be the Marine, they wanted to be the SEAL, they wanted to be whatever it is. But how do you do that? You have to start learning other people's roles and responsibilities. And that, that sets them up perfectly for what we say is adapt and overcome. No matter yes. what the situation is, adapt and overcome. They need to be prepared because in the business world, it's, it's just as volatile as the battlefield. It's Not just worse. crazy with technology, the way that you can easily communicate from anywhere in the world yep. at a split second's notice. It's just a volatile 
community, the business world in general, the way yeah. trends go up and down, they need to be prepared yep. for anything. They need to be prepared for that that unpredictable nature of it, just yep. like on the battlefield. So that thing, that's, this is exactly how they could break down those silos. Love it. They have cement walls in between the silos, yep. and you and I are there to come into their company mm -hmm. and help them just smash down those brick walls that are that are holding them back, connect them all together as one team, one fight. You know, we say it in, we say it in the military, we'll say it in the battlefield, one shot, one kill. Sometimes as a sniper, I have one shot to make that, that life critical decision-making shot. Well, guess what? We walk into that boardroom too. Sometimes we got one shot, one kill. You got one shot to make it happen, or guess what's gonna happen if, you're, if you don't have all your ducks in a row? You're gone, you're gone. So there's, people always go, that's so harsh. That's so harsh, right? No, it's not, that's life. Sometimes you only have one shot in that moment to obtain whatever it is, if you're going for a contract, if you're going for a new client, if you're going for whatever, a job interview, there you go, job interview. I got one shot, not to impress you, but to make an impact. That's what we talk about. I don't want to be impressed by someone. I don't want to be impressed with pe people that impress me are just talking, talking to talk. People that are impactful for me are the people that are like literally, you know, you're walking back to your car, something's up, I'm just trying to use it in civilian terms. Hey, did you have a good day, you need anything? People that go out of their way, people that literally, people that impress me, I'm gonna forget about them in a week or two. If I'm a CEO, people that impact me, they're the people that I want to bring up the chain of command because I want them being that impactful to the people around them. So that's what LTD's about. It's about creating impact, it's about creating Teamwork, problem solving, leadership, and communication to the highest level so that when you and or your company go into whatever battle it may be, you are going to come out victorious. So I just want to recap real quick that in order for us to help break out of those silos mm -hmm. the way that you did in the SEALs, yep. the way we do in the Marines, the way they need to do it in the business mm -hmm. field, I think first is to lose their freaking egos. Yes. Leave their ego at the door. Second is to not look for their own personal recognition, is to think about the mission, the mm -hmm. one team, one fight that you're talking about. I think those are some of the key take home points about how to break down those silos to work as one collective unit. I couldn't agree more. I think that's it. Stop, stop looking for recognition and just do your job. And I'm telling you the recognition will come because if everybody just gives 100%, you're gonna be more productive, you're gonna get the results, and then with results come what? Recognition. People, will, and guess what? If you don't get recognized every time, that's fine, right? You know, let, let, let's use American pastime sports, football. Everybody wants to, the quarterback did this, and the running back did this, and the linebacker did this, but you know what? The people that are in the trenches, the lines, the offensive, defensive lines, they're the ones that are in there selflessly, you know, grinding, putting it out. And that's what I think the average American is. They're the linemen that are in there grinding and getting it done. All right, the CEO may be the quarterback or whatever, and you've got a few high level individuals that are taking a lot of credit, but I'm telling you this right now, a good leader, I know me with my employees, I know who's putting out, and I make sure I reward them. I make sure that, you know what, and reward can come in a lot of different fashions. Imagine, when's the last time, you know, think about it, if you're a CEO, you own a couple million dollar business, you walk up to somebody that's been in the company for six months and just go, hey, hey Steve, I really appreciate what you're doing, thank you. Do you know what kind of impact that would leave on someone? It doesn't always have to be of a monetary value. The smallest things that you do as a leader have what we talked about, that domino effect of positivity. And guess what, you know what's gonna happen? That's, that's gonna be ingrained in their head, you know what they're gonna do later on down the road when they climb up? Hopefully they're gonna pass that on. And that's the teachings that we, we, we apply and we instill in LTD is, it, it's not always, I know, about money. It's about just doing good things, becoming, coming collectively together as a team and accomplishing whatever the goal is. You know one thing I've noticed in the Marine Corps, the, the units that had the highest morale, mm -hmm. the units that performed the best, executed their missions the best, and this goes into the business world also, yeah. the companies that do the best, when they succeed, when they accomplish a mission, when they make the money, when they close a deal in the business <clears> world, they would go to the leader, they would go to the commander, they would go to the CEO, and maybe an interview, you've seen it in, in the news, this is how you, this is the way I see how you break down those silos, how, yeah. and this is what real leadership is. They go to the commander or the CEO, congratulate on the success, on the victory of the mission, the closing the big deal, the merger, the acquisitions, whatever it is in the company, they give them congratulations to the leader, and the leader says, that's all because of 
this team, this team, this team, basically taking de- taking no recognition, no credit for it. They deflect they all the credibility there, to David, yes. all out there. Those are the most successful teams. Those are the ones with the highest morale. Yes. Those are the, the our units in the Marine Corps that were the most successful, that re-enlisted, wanted to stay in because they were all part of one team and one fight, not just some person worried about their ego at the yep. top, worried about taking all the credit and recognition mm-hmm. for those linemen that were bashing bashing on, on the line, grinding it out day after day. Those are the companies that also are the most successful and, and get the most respect from their teams. Yes, That's, I think, one of the key components to breaking down those silos. Yeah. And again, always comes back to leadership. Great leaders are selfless, not selfish. There it is. So these sound like some great steps that companies could take to start breaking down those silos immediately to build their teams for the battlefield of business. Exactly.